Let's talk about some practical aspects of k-means, and in particular, how do you choose k? Well, because, you know, in reality, you don't know how many clusters you have. You just have, you know, a pile of, pile of data. So, um, so k-means is relatively cheap to run. So what people often do is they run it multiple times for different values of k. And then, of course, for each value of k, you want a bunch of replicates with different initial seeds so that you hopefully get the best cost for that value of k. Okay? So um, the thing is that as you increase k, then you have more cluster centers, so the cost generally goes down, right? The cost is the, um, the total, the, the sum of distances to the nearest cluster centers. So if you have more cluster centers, that cost goes down. Um, but eventually, um, it won't go down very much, and that's probably where you want to stop. Like, you've reached this point of, of diminishing returns, and, and that's where you, you sort of say, okay, that, that's the number of clusters I want. All right, so just to give you a little bit of a summary about k-means, um, it's an incredibly popular clustering algorithm. It's very computationally efficient because, you know, think about its two steps. Finding the mean of a bunch of points, that's easy. And then it's a single loop to find out what the cluster assignments are. And you just repeat those two steps over and over again. So it's, it's very computationally very efficient, which is probably why people really like it. Uh, it performs alternating minimization, as you know, on a cost function. However, of course, it doesn't always fully optimize that cost function, which is why you might need multiple replicates for a good solution. And you can use the cost function itself to, to, to evaluate whether one replicate is better than another, because you know, the replicate with the lower cost is the one that was better. And then, as I showed you on the last slide, you can use that cost function to help choose the number of clusters by trying to find the point of diminishing returns. And then, as I <laughs> noted, <laughs> it does not work well for highly non-spherical clusters. Um, you know, you, you <laughs> so k-means is whole, the whole premise of k-means is that you want to be close to the cluster center. But if you have some kind of manifold, um, then this whole perspective doesn't really work. And then I should mention, of course, that I used a Euclidean distance here. But you can choose your own distance metric. You can find one that's more natural for your problem. And then you can use you can use that one. All right, so hopefully this gives you a good overall perspective on k-means. Thanks.